welcome back to another playthrough series. This time I'm going to be playing through Chaos in the Old World. Warhammer Chaos in the Old World. Uh, put out by Fantasy Flight Games and designed by Eric Lang. Uh, it's basically an area control, world domination kind of game. There's a victory point track, uh, which is one way to win the game if you are the first player to 50 points or beyond at the end of a round. And there's also uh, another victory condition up here on these little dials, wheels that turn. Uh, and of course, all of this complicated stuff will be explained as we play the game. Uh, but there is a win condition if the dial turns enough times. Uh, the gist of it is you're playing one of the four chaos uh, gods in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. And we have Korn, who is the blood god, into uh, killing things. We have Nurgle, the lord of pestilence, into disease and that type of stuff. We have Zinch, who is the changer of ways. He's into magic and just messing things around. And we have Slanesh, the prince of pleasure. He's into uh, corrupting nobles and heroes and uh, doing all that kind of uh, evil thing. So yes, you're playing an evil god in this game. Ah, uh, wow, how to go over all the rules. I'm uh, probably not going to. I will basically uh, show you some of the components, zoom in a bit of the board, uh, go through a turn order, uh, showing you that from the rule book, and then we're going to get right into it uh, for the first episode, which will be after this introduction setup one, and we'll get right into the gameplay. So let me zoom in on a few different areas of the board. Uh, there's still some setup that needs to be done. We'll do that as well. Um, and I'll try explain a little bit, I suppose, as we go. Uh, it's a it's not a very complicated game to play, but the interaction between cards and the different gods' powers, and they are all totally different, which is really neat about this game. It's asymmetrical. Uh, Corn plays different than Slush, and Zench, and Nurgle, all different. They have different objectives in the board, different ways to victory, different cards to play, different units, different numbers of units. Very cool stuff. Let me zoom into a few areas, explain some stuff, and then we'll get into finishing up the setup. So just for space-wise, I put all the units up at the very top of the board. Um, I will show you some uh, detail of them in uh, future episodes. Uh, but they have basically three different types of units. They have cultists, they have warriors, and they have a greater demon. Uh, each of the uh, miniatures are different for the warriors and the greater demons, but the cultist figures are all the same. And there's different numbers of cultists. So Zinch actually has eight cultists, Korn has four cultists, Nurgle and Slanesh both have six cultists, and then they have different numbers of um, warriors uh, as well. So they have different numbers, but they have different objectives in the game. Uh, and I'll show you their uh, cards here in a minute, and we'll discuss a little bit about uh, what the uh, advancement options are for the different gods in the game. And it has to do with these turning wheels here. If they fulfill their objective on their card uh, in a round, they will get what's called a tick on the wheel. They get to rotate their wheel once, which means they get more powerful in the world, in the old world, and they get upgrade cards, or they get victory points, or they get to draw cards, or they get to do things that mess around with the game. All right, let's zoom to another area and talk about that. All right, so here's the start of the victory track, and each of the four gods, of course, has a token representing them, uh, and they're, they all start on zero. And this goes all the way around the board up to 54 points. And of course, if you get more than 54 points on the end of a round, you just wrap it around. These are the old world cards. These are things, uh, there are seven of them from a deck of 28 or 24, I forget exactly. Uh, you randomly shuffle them and you put seven here. Uh, this is, these are things that are happening in the world, like heroes appearing or dark elves come out and... Uh, battle you or there's you know meteor showers there's all kinds of events and activities that happen here but there's only seven of them and one comes out every turn uh, so it's kind of a timer in the game as well because if this deck ever runs out which means you can't draw any more cards from it the game immediately ends and whoever has the most uh, victory points wins um, and I can just kind of go up here these are the turn wheels a little bit hard to see uh, I might try a different angle here and um, explain a little bit about how they work. Okay, I don't like to do it. This is handheld, but uh, I don't want to make anyone seasick. I'll try to be as uh, steady as I can. But as you can see here, the four different wheels. We have Corn here, Nurgle, 
um, Zinch and Slanesh. And if you look here closely, they each have a starting uh, thing. And this dial's turn, of course. Uh, and if the dial turns enough times, it will get to uh, something here like this says Slanesh Victory. So if the dial spins enough times, and they're actually different uh, for each of the gods as well. They have a different number of turns to get to that victory condition. Uh, so again, some asymmetrical, uh, interesting stuff. And the things that happen inside the dial, drawing cards or doing things in the world, are also different, uh, generally speaking, for the different gods. Um, and again, I'm not going to go into a whole ton of detail how that all works, uh, because as we play the game, you'll see that. And maybe I can zoom in a little bit here of the miniatures. Um, we've got the Zinch units. Over here we have the Corn units. And then we have Nurgle. And we have Slanesh. And in the back behind them, of course, are all of the Corruption tokens, uh, which will be happening. All right, um, let me get away from the handheld thing. And we'll go over to the god cards and have a look at those. All right, so I just set up all the, the four gods over here. So we have Corn, Nurgle, Zinch, and Slanesh. They each have um, uh, a player mat. And they have three different units. This is their cultists, their warriors, and their greater demons of different names, of course, and different statistics. They have an attack value, a defense value, which is how many hits it takes to kill them. And they have a summoning value. So if we're looking at Corn here, it costs one to summon a cultist for him, two for a bloodletter, three for his bloodthirster greater demon. And uh, some of the numbers are different. Nurgle here can uh, recruit one for a cultist, one for a plague bear, which is his warrior. Uh, and so there are different uh, differences there. Each of the uh, four gods as well has a deck of, I believe it's 24 cards. These are things they are going to be using to place on the board. And each space, I could have shown you that earlier, uh, has two locations to place cards. And during the summoning phase, they can either place a miniature on the board, a cultist warrior or greater demon, or they can play a card and the cards have special text. Of course, each of the gods also has six, or sorry, five upgrade cards. They can upgrade their cultist warriors and greater demons, and they also have a couple of special ability cards. Uh, these come about when their wheel turns and it says upgrade card. It means they get to choose one of these to add to their god, making him a little bit stronger. So to go through quickly, Korn uh, will get uh, the opportunity to turn his wheel every time he kills a miniature of another player. Nurgle, when he places two corruption in a populous zone, there are four of them on the board, will get the opportunity to turn his wheel. Zinch, uh, he, if he puts two corruption in a place with a warp stone, uh, symbol or magic symbol and or magic symbol he gets uh, that ability and Slanesh uh, if he corrupts puts two corruption in his own with a noble or hero he gets to turn uh, his wheel all right um, I'm just going to show you from the rule book the the order of play and I think we're going to leave it off there uh, and at the beginning of the game each of the gods gets to draw three cards into their hand and we are going to be playing Zinch. Uh, and so we, let's just draw Zinch's three cards and I'll show you those. Uh, so this costs zero to put onto the board. And it says the effects of all other chaos cards in this region are canceled. So Zinch is good at messing with things. And this is the magic symbol. Uh, it says if you kill one or more figures in battle this region, this round, you may choose to not discard this card at the end of the phase, leaving it in place for next round. Again, it just costs one to summon or one to play, has a magic symbol, and we have teleport. Move any cultist or warrior in this region to any other region when you play this card. So Zinch, who will be playing, is very good at messing around uh, with stuff and other players on the board. Okay, so we're gonna drop, we're not gonna be looking at Korn's cards, Slanesh's, or Nurgle's. We're gonna assume those are other players, although I'll be playing them, of course. But we will concentrate on doing um, Zinch's uh, activities from the standpoint of the viewer of this series. Okay, I'm going to show you the rule book now. We're going to go through uh, the turn and then the end phase. And then next time, uh, I will be getting right into gameplay. And will I make mistakes? Uh, undoubtedly. This is relatively complicated. Uh, there's lots of steps. Um, will I be playing strategically perfect every time? <laughs> Not likely. 
Uh, each of the four gods, like I said, plays uh, completely differently. They have different objectives. And I will probably be doing things during the game and having uh, viewers going, what are you doing? That is the dumbest thing ever. But uh, bear with me. I'm trying to uh, highlight the game, how it plays, show you how it plays, not how to play it perfectly, because uh, that way lies madness. All right, I'll get you back to the rule book now, and we'll have a look at how, an, how a turn actually works. All right, and to just uh, finish up the actual setup, uh, we need to take four um, peasants, uh, two noble tokens, and three warpstone tokens, which of course is meaning nothing to you at this point, uh, and randomly place them on the board. So I put them in my nice crown royal bag, and I pull them out randomly. First token is a peasant. The peasant is going to go up here in Norska. Second token I pull out is another peasant. He's going to go out here in Troll Country. Uh, the next token I pull out is a warp stone, which is going in Kislev. Um, and the next token I pull out is a noble token in the Empire. Uh, and the next token I pull out is another uh, peasant going in Victonia. And then a warp stone for Stalia. And then another peasant, Tilia. And a Noble is going to be going in the Border Princes, and lastly, a Warp Stone down here. Can't quite see it, but the board's pretty big down in the Badlands. Okay, uh, wow. I suppose I can uh, briefly explain. So, uh, things Warp Stones are what uh, we are interested in as Zinch, because if we place Corruption in zones with Warp Stones, and our magic symbols, we get to move our dial, which will improve our god, and get us closer to a victory condition by dial turning, which is pretty difficult to do, but can be done. Uh, noble tokens increase that number, which is resistance and point value uh, for, the for the Empire. So right here, this point value is going to actually be 6, because there's a noble token here. Uh, same with the bad, uh, border princes here. This uh, victory point value will be two because there's a prince here. It's also the resistance number. So anyway, keep that in mind. And lastly, uh, peasants are just as this says peasants. There are some cards in the game that will affect peasants on the board. You can kill peasants with your warriors uh, and greater demons and put them on your card and they might uh, give you victory points or do different things as the game proceeds. All right, let me just get out the manual here Go very quickly through how the turns work and then next episode we're gonna get right into it Okay, so this is basically the game round uh, The first is the old world phase This means we're gonna draw one of the old world cards and we're gonna do what it says It's simple as that the draw phase means that our greater gods are going to draw those little uh, cards into their hand uh, and everyone uh, gets to draw two cards except Zinch, who are we, we are playing. We get to draw up to five cards all the time. There's no hand limit. Uh, the summoning phase is when we're either going to be playing cards to the uh, board or summoning units to the board. And we do that in a specific order. We do Corn goes first, then Nurgle, then Zinch, us, and then Slanesh. And it just keeps going around and around until uh, everyone has zero power left. Uh, and then that's going to end that. And the battle phase is, of course, if there are any warriors or greater demons in a zone uh, with uh, valid targets, we're going to battle them. The corruption phase uh, is we look for dominance in an area. Do we have more uh, miniatures and influence than any other uh, elder or any other god? And then we score victory points if we overcome the resistance in the area. I know this is a lot of information to take in. And the end phase. Uh, which I can show you is also uh, made up of a whole lot of different uh, things. If I can quickly find it here huh, to try to explain all of this. So up at the top here it says the end phase. Uh, we remove chaos cards from the board. So we do all these things in order. We resolve hero tokens. Hero tokens can come out. They actually uh, destroy units on the board. Uh, chaos god units. Resolve old world cards. Uh, that is, the, there's Bottom text on some of the cards would be resolved at this time. Score ruined regions. If a region has 12 or more corruption on it, it will be ruined. Warp stones count as one corruption. Uh, advance the threat dials. That's where we take a look at uh, which gods have fulfilled their objective this round. And they get to advance their threat dial. 
Uh, if someone has a uh, more um, advancement tokens on their dial than any other god, then that particular chaos god gets to advance their token or their dial twice. And then we check for end game uh, scenario. So has anybody won the game with dial turns? That would end the game right there. Next, you look at victory point track. Anyone have 50 or more victory points? Uh, and then you take a look at uh, ruination. If there are no ruination cards left and there are five of them, uh, then that would be the end of the game. Look at victory points. And lastly, all of the old gods can lose if all seven of the old world cards uh, have been played. Uh, then... That just ends the game uh, and everyone loses. Wow, I know, a ton, a ton of stuff to take in uh, to account. It is a very uh, strategic uh, sort of worker placement area control, uh, asymmetric power uh, struggle game. Very, very cool game. Uh, a lot of people love this. A lot of people hate the theme because it's rather gory and gruesome and everyone's playing an evil, uh, rotten chaos. Uh, demon, demon lord, um, god, so I should say, not demon lord. Uh, and so there you have it. That is going to be, uh, we're going to be doing a complete playthrough of Chaos in the Old World. We will be taking on the persona of Zinch, who is uh, the changer of ways, who likes to mess things about. And of course, the uh, computer AI, which will be me in the background, will be doing the Cornstall Nash Nurgle uh, turns. All right, I uh, hope you enjoy me for the series. I will do my best to not mess up, uh, but I'm sure I will, because, again, there's enough uh, complexity. It's a simplistic rules to the game, but the complexity comes in all the card interactions and uh, the different tokens on the board and uh, different unit abilities uh, and, and such. So, again, I will try to do my best to not mess things up. Uh, I'm going to be doing a complete playthrough of this. Uh, the game not exactly that long because uh, there's only seven Old World cards. Of course, if they run out, game's over. Uh, if someone gets to 50 victory points quickly, game will be over. If someone can turn their threat dial uh, quickly enough and get to a, a you, know, you know, that Chaos God wins, that will be game over. Whew, all right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Join me next time for the beginning of Chaos in the Old World. We're playing Zinch, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, thanks for watching. Join me next time.